All right. So we said there are 22 men already declared. There's going to be eight entrants. Who are going to be the surprise entrants that we're going to see? Who are those eight? Uh, uh, so, give me give me two ahead. ideas. There's four of us. So let's each throw out two names. We'll start with Mike again. We'll just go that uh, order. Start, s- starting with me again. Uh, I will. Um, I-, I believe there's going to be some NXTers. I believe there's going to be a couple of legends. And I believe there's obviously some main roster guys uh, who are, have not announced. So I'm going to take one legend. I believe firmly that Kurt Angle will be in this match. I also believe that while everyone is saying there's not a contract signed, and while there's no chance he makes an appearance at the Rumble, I believe there is a contract signed, and I believe that Kenny Omega will sign a contract at the 11th hour and will make his WWE appearance a la AJ Styles last year at the Rumble. Boom. So long, tight shot of Roman Reigns just staring. <laughs> right. Got it. Well, and then, then he comes in and one-winged angels, Kurt, Ang- uh, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's never able to walk again. And uh, boom, there we go. All right. Oh, On that note, Derek. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Obviously, I've already said one. Samoa Joe's going to be in it. He he has to be in it when you know, to win. I believe that is the rule. That is a rule. Uh, the other one, I, I'm going to go with the. No, I'm not stealing that one, Mike. Uh, one of those guys will get it. Seth Rollins. I mean, he's not announced that he's in the Rumble, but he's got to be in the Rumble, e- even for a little bit. Like, sure, he didn't. He lost his spot on Raw, but he's going to get a spot again. Yeah, I mean, he's not he's not listed anywhere. Yeah, he doesn't have a match. He doesn't have and they're not going to I mean, it's not like he's injured or anything like that where they need to give him time off. There, there's something brewing there, but it's just a question of what it is. Can I can I give my theory on what's going to happen here? So uh, way, I think you're going to steal mine. Yeah, so you know, JC is going to be all over that. Go, go ahead, JC. OK, let's hear it. I'm sorry. Uh, Pete Dunn, number one. He's coming in. He's been pulled from everything for the weekend. That's my number one. Oh, really? One. Yep. He's supposed to be in San Antonio. And I, they put him out instead of Tyler Bate, even though Tyler Bate has the strap. Whatever. Number can't, two. You can't have a champion lose. I mean, that's... You got to make him look strong. Right. <laughs> okay, Taz. <laughs> number two is the game, the Cerebral Assassin, Triple H. H. Triple H. Who now will... my 10-year-old's going to mark out. Okay, cool. Who will be eliminated due to interference from one Seth Rollins, who will not be in the match, but he's going to run out there and yank old Hunter right out. See, and then Corey Booker is going to show up and throw down with him. I was going to put a slightly different angle on this. So oh, okay. I, I think Triple H has one of Rawls' spots, but I think Seth Rollins attacks H before he even gets to the ring h never gets into the ring rollins assumes his spot rollins is one of the final five and then gets uh doubly screwed by h uh thus setting up the match we all know is coming at mania okay i can dig that too all right tom all right so the first one I'm going to go with is that they always bring back quote unquote legends and it, it's going to be a random legend. And I was thinking as you guys were talking, what random legend from the, I'll say nineties. Cause you don't want to pull eighties guys out there cause they can barely move and they're dead. But what nineties guys who aren't dead, um, could they pull out and have signed to a legends contract? And I don't have a list of legends contracts in front of me or anything like that, but for sake of argument, I'll throw Tatanka out there um, because Chris Chavis, I think can still move someone or at least bump a little bit and he'll play the music and he'll do a little dance and he'll end up getting thrown out anyway, but they just need to fill a, number and instead of putting someone like oh you know like tyler breeze who deserves to be out there they'll throw out tatanka to dance around and get thrown out the second person i'll throw out there 
Uh, and this one I kind of discussed already with JC previously, but I foresee looking back at the NXT show the previous night, Shinsei Nakamura is not going to drop the belt to Bobby Roode. Shinsei is going to go over clean. So everybody's going to go, oh, maybe Bobby Roode will make an appearance, you know, because honestly, that that's all he needs is the song and people will mark out for it and that type of thing. But no, it's going to be Nakamura because Nakamura is going to go over, keep his championship and kind of get that buzz out of the way. Because if he drops the belt, everyone's going to go, oh, is this going to be his call up? Is this going to be his call up? You don't need him to drop the belt to show up at the Rumble, to go into the Rumble, to do stuff in the Rumble and not necessarily win the Rumble, but be out there. Vince needs a little bit more of a taste of something on a bigger scale. He's, I think he's still afraid that Shinsei's not going to get over with the mainstream crowd. They'll get over with the NXT crowd, that's fine, but he needs to see him on a major stage. And the Rumble gives the opportunity for him to come out at one or two so that you can get full entrance. Let him come out, let people mark out for him. So that Vince can turn around and watch and listen and go, okay, these fans actually like him. The same way that they did with AJ last year, put him in early, let him go for 20, 25 minutes, watch as the crowd gets behind him, chants for him, gets complete. Because I think, honestly, that's what built AJ into an actual main eventer the, the, for the booking, at least, to put him towards a main event type run because they saw him get over immediately at rumble and they realized you know what the fans even like the non-mainstream fans they're going to get into him they're someone we can build off of this so to bring nakamura out there if he doesn't get over like vince potentially fears if he doesn't get over with the mainstream crowd the rumble's done he still got his NXT title. He goes back to NXT, finishes it out, and does whatever he needs to do. Maybe he comes up later, maybe not. But this will be his his foot in the water. He goes in there. He does a one-shot deal. We'll see how the crowd reacts to him. If the crowd reacts greatly to him, maybe we kind of work off of that. He brings the strap with him because Kevin Owens brought the strap with him to Raw and SmackDown. Why not bring the NXT championship there for at least another couple of matches before he drops it at say the next takeover. I can dig it. Build him into that. But this, this could be his test, bring him in, let his music play, watch and see how the crowd reacts. And if the crowd pops for it, maybe this is his time. All right. Well, and I'll even go back that that plays well, because I think uh, again, you've got to have Shinsuke, at the Orlando NXT as, as the champ still. And and I think they, if, if my theory is correct, that Kenny Omega will show up, I I think something between Omega and Nakamura happening in the rumble is a good kickoff to what could be a, a, an epic, epic battle uh, leading up between Nakamura and Omega on the road to WrestleMania, because that, that would be a WrestleMania NXT level thing that would not only have the WWE universe excited, but every damn injury Mark and new Japan Mark would be coming out of their skin, uh, to see Omega and Nakamura one more time. Oh, I like that. All right. One last quick question off the top of your head before we let you boys go, since I know it's a, a busy day at the worldwide headquarters. Um, and the most important question, too, uh, what crazy spot is Kofi Kingston going to pull off this year? Oh, Jesus. Um, Wow, that's that's a really good question because we've seen one or two things with the chair, uh, the handstand. <sighs> Kofi Kingston lands on a human. Well, he's done that. Yeah, that happened last he year. He did that last year with uh, Biggie. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. And there goes that. Oh man, I don't know, JC. Do you have an idea? Is that does does the New Day have pogo stick merch yet? Because if not, I would put my money on pogo stick because that's the one item that the New Day has not merched yet. Mm. Hmm. New See, Day hops. New Day <laughs> hops. 
new day hops. There we go. Well, they could just bring one out for this. See, I I'm feel thinking... like Francesca factors into it. I don't know how, but Turbo His... Fran... Francesca what... to Turbo will factor into it. One foot was on Francesca. There you go. Yep. See, I'm, I'm Xavier's seeing appalled maybe... and screaming. <laughs> maybe Kofi's getting thrown over the top rope. His leg gets caught. His leg gets caught into the ropes, and then all of a sudden, his foot comes off. <laughs> wow! So that he lands on the floor, Kerry Von Erich style, but he's still okay because technically his other foot has not hit the ground. And he has to catch the other foot, so doesn't. So, <laughs> so then he kind of crawls back into the ring and reattaches his foot and continues the match. Okay. Before bleeding out. S- side, <laughs> side question. Could Zach Gowan ever have been eliminated from the Royal Rumble? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, thank you for joining us, Mike and Derek. Uh, tell everyone at home where they can find the podcast and the website and your Twitters and I'll yeah, pl- plug people your stuff. listening to this won't know. Oh, yeah, because all of the people listening to this will definitely not know that you can go to section328.com, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you can find reputable and non-reputable podcast. Uh, look for the Cheaters Never Win Hockey Podcast. On this week's episode of Cheaters Never Win, uh, full t- four-time All-Star and U.S. Olympian defenseman, uh, also a member of your Carolina Hurricanes, Justin Fox on the podcast, uh, Jared Cohen from J- – Jesse Cohen. Jesse Cohen, thank you, from uh, – Jared Cohen, he plays for the Ottawa Senators. That would have been a good as well. But Jesse Cohen from All the Kings Men uh, and LAKings.com joins us to talk the All-Star game as well as the uh, Kings matchup uh, that I believe will be happening tonight by the time you actually get this edited and posted. And uh, Derek and I talk about beer and hockey and walking with women. Very good. I think. (laughs) Well, I thought you I thought you got Jericho. I was going to get pissed. Like, dude, those are the people we need on the podcast, not you. Hey, we're, 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 we're consistently breaking down walls, Tom. All right, Mike, Derek, thank you guys for joining us. Have a good night, boys. All right. Later guys. All right. Another big thanks to, uh, Mike and Derek from section three twenty eight com and the cheaters never win podcast from joining us. Uh, I heartily look forward to making sure and laughing in their faces, uh, on Sunday when all their picks are wrong and they make all those dumb decisions they just said. I, I really can't believe they said half the stuff that they did. I mean, what a bunch of marks. <laughs> All right, Tom, you ready to run down takeover? Yeah, let's do uh, this quick. Yeah, we're, ru- we're running long on time, so we're ju- I'm going to read the match, and we're just going to we're just going to give our winner for the two people left that are still listening. Yeah, I'm sorry for the two people that started and they st- that's good. We kept we listener retention, Tom, two for two for the full hour. All right. Woo. All right, uh, Roderick Strong and Andre C- Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, Roderick Strong. Roderick it's, Strong. Almas is not like he's been stuck in the mud, and they need. Yeah, get... we weren't talking really about these things, were we? Yeah, we're supposed need... to be going fast. Yeah, they need to get Roddy ready for the belt. Uh, yeah. Ey Eric Young versus Ty Dellinger. Uh, Ey. Ey. Yeah, yeah, he's got quality beard. Got to build sanity up. Uh, fatal four way for the NXT Women's Championship: Oscar versus Nikki Cross versus Billy Kay versus Peyton Royce. I don't know who those other three people are. So, uh, Nikki Cross is the girl that's insanity. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are the two Australian girls. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Oscar's gonna win because no one can beat Oscar. Although this would be the opportunity to get the belt off of her so that she doesn't actually have to take a loss. So I could see her dropping the belt without losing, but I really. Oscar, uh, Oscar retains. Uh, she does a slow burn heel turn to where Ember Moon takes the belt off of her at uh, Takeover Orlando. I'm going Nikki Cross. So there. Okay. Sanity uh, for everyone. Tag team championship match DIY Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus the author of uh, authors of pain. Rezar and Akam Akam. God damn it! I never heard, remember how to pronounce that. Uh, and Paul Ellery. God, I hope the authors of pain don't take those belts. Uh, I, I'm hoping DIY takes it just because the authors of paint are not ready. And, but somebody, somebody potentially may get hurt in this match. So, yeah, uh, I, Oh God, I think the authors of pain win and it pains me to say that. I, me too. It, that's, I'm that's just going to pick in it. my head. I'm just going to pick them. 
screw yeah, it. Yeah, you're uh, probably right. NXT 